सरदार वल्लभ भाई पटेल आर्किटेक्ट ऑफ ऑल इंडिया सर्विसेज द फर्स्ट होम मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंडिया एंड विसार्ज द सेटिंग अप ऑफ द नेशनल पुलिस अकादमी द सरदार वल्लभ भाई पटेल नेशनल पुलिस अकादमी एट हैदराबाद an organization driven with a vision a vision of the future it is the abode of ips officers trainees who will lead and command the police with courage uprightness dedication and a strong sense of service to the people the national police academy is the focal point for training the ips probationers in various spheres and one such significant domain is equitation equitation or horse riding is a mandatory part of the basic training of ips officers being an important aspect of public order management it is also a confidence building activity which includes leadership qualities equitation involves both training of the rider and the horse it bestows the rider with a well balanced stable and strong seating stance independent of the reins to correctly apply the aids to control the horse transforming the trainee into a bold and skillful rider training of a horse aims at developing a well balanced mount that is capable of moving over long distances a horse is trained to be quick in obeying the correct aids steady and to jump over the obstacles alone or in a group it is trained to work unperturbed in the cacophony surrounding a public order situation a horse has a large brain and 55 to 60 degree binocular vision monocular vision is on each side and blind area just in front and at the rear it has a good memory and is quick to learn a horse becomes completely mature at the tender age of 2 years the body of the horse is divided into head neck shoulders body quarters also known as hind legs There are three basic colors of a horse: bay, chestnut, and gray. Health of a horse has to be consistently checked. Utmost care has to be provided with hygiene. Good grooming at least once a day for 56 minutes is very important to keep the horse in a good condition. A horse must be groomed regularly to keep the pores of the skin open and free from scuff and dirt. Sand bath is very necessary for the horse as rolling on the sand opens up sweat glands of the horse and brings freshness. Horses should be fed with grain and chaff and twice with hay. As a horse has a very small stomach for his size, he cannot eat much at a time. without impairing his digestion he should therefore be fed little and often 4 to 5 times a day on the other hand the horse has a very large intestine and bulk is therefore a necessity in his food watering drill is a must for horses horses drink water more when they do it together at water point during watering drill Water should always be made available in the stable. There are two types of shoeing. That is hot and cold shoeing. Faulty shoeing is often the cause of preventable foot injuries and ailments. The provision of good bedding is an important detail in horse management as it encourages the horse to lie down and thus rest his legs. Caused by contact with hard floors rubber matting also helps in saving the horse from stable injuries 
It is important to wear a proper riding dress. Helmet T-shirt Belt Breeches Riding putties Shoes make a rider's dress. It is essential that the breeches fit the body. Loosely fitted breeches may cause abrasions. Method of putting bridle Saddle on the horse is referred to as tacking. The bridle is also known as exercise head collar. Is composed of various leather pieces joined together with buckles so that it can be adjusted to fitting of the horse. The bit of snaffle exerts a lever action in the horse's mouth. The degree of pressure is controlled by rider through the reins in the hands of the rider. A numna or blanket or saddle cloth also known as jet pad is used just under the saddle to provide extra protection for the horse's back to soak up any sweat. Different saddles are available for various disciplines like dressage, show jumping and universal saddle for basic riding. The girth leather or nylon or nevar is also a very important link. The girth or girths hold the saddle on the horse back firmly, in place like a tight belt. The stirrup irons are attached to the stirrup leathers, which are fixed with a safety catch in open position in the saddle, so that the stirrup is released in the event of a fall. Approach the horse with words like, Hello baby, hello boy, etc. In the marginal sight and never from blind area. Pat him on neck and then stand to the left side of the horse, which is also known as the near side. One should never go behind the horse as it is the blind area for the horse. Fine temperament should be possessed by every horse rider. A rider must be patient, tactful, sympathetic and should reward the horse with a pat immediately at the least sign of obedience. A rider should be reasonable in demands. By asking little and not too often, the rider has to keep the temper under control even when punishing a stubborn horse. For saddling, the rider should first take the blanket and fold it properly. Numna be placed at the right spot. One has to make sure that the girth of the saddle is wide enough for two fingers to fit in. Each panel of the saddle has to be on two sides of the horse's spine and not directly on the spine as it could cause pain or back soreness. To bridle the horse, one has to place the neck strap first, followed by the reins. Set the head collar and bit be slipped into his mouth and throat lash should be fastened. One has to hold to the nose band tightly enough, leaving enough room for one finger between it. There are two types of drills with the horse, Saudhan and Vishram. For Saudhan position, one must stand to the left of the horse, which is called the near side. Rider's boot toe and horse hoof should be in a line and stand in Vishram position for being ready with horse with the command Tayar Ho. Sawar, Kode ke tayar ho. One has to put the left leg close to the right and right hand raised on the reins buckle. For Vishram position, Sawar, Vishram. On the trainer's command, one should open the left foot outside as per the height, then slip down the right hand on the rein. Left hand should be stretched down along the body. 
Mounting is simply defined as getting on the horse's back. For mounting the horse, Sawar, kode ke saath tayar ho. The first step is to take three quarters turn to the horse, holding both reins in left hand. Rakab ke saath sawar ho. Finally, the rider has to leap, mount, and then hold the reins in both the hands properly. Dismount is simply defined as getting off the horse's back. For dismounting, the rider should first hold the front arc with both hands. Rakab ke saath utar. Then, one should take the right foot out of the stirrup irons and rest the hands on the horse's withers, followed by leaning forward by taking the body weight on to the hands and left leg. Then, one should swing the right leg over the saddle and land lightly on the ground to the near side of the horse in southern position for a good position of the rider the legs have to be stretched down and straight to secure as deep a seat as possible and the knees and ankles should be supple the legs should not grip tightly The rider has to be upright and not rigid. While sitting correctly, it should be possible to draw a line through the shoulder point and hip joint to the heel of the foot. The rider's legs should fit snugly to the sides so that it is not possible to see anything between them and the saddle. The legs should not grip so tightly that the muscles get tense and stiff. The rider's shoulder, hip and heel should not be incorrect. One should not let the leg go too far forward as if sitting on a chair. This is called the chair seat and is incorrect. Aids are signals by which rider expresses his craving or demand on horse and horse consequently obeys. There are two types of aids, natural and artificial. One should use aids to control the horse. Aids can be natural such as seat, hands and legs. Or artificial such as a crop, whip or spurs. Voice aid is used to encourage or calm the horse according to the tone. To make a horse move forward, a rider has to squeeze with his calves. Horses that do not move forward after a gentle squeeze may need more energy. To make the horse halt, one should sit deep in the saddle and apply pressure with the reins. To turn the horse, one has to pull the right rein out to the side and apply pressure with one's outside leg the horse will turn his head as much as one wants and continue to go straight forward there are four type of paces in a horse walk trot canter and gallop walk it is four beat pace with one leg moving at a time the simplest forward movement made by the horse the rider should be calm and relaxed while moving his body naturally to the four beat rhythm of the horse's cadence with a light and positive contact to walk the horse one should apply both legs in girth line followed by loosening the reins by this aid the horse starts to walk trot it is two beat pace and diagonal legs move at one time. In order to evade the jerk, a combination of sitting and race positions is adopted by the rider. To trot the horse, a rider has to apply both the legs on girth line a little stronger than the walk aid. There are two types of trot, the rising trot 
and the sitting trot. The sitting trot should not present a picture of a person bumping about on horse's back. On the contrary, the rider should relax and control his body in such a way that it gently bounces to the ascent and descent of the two-beat rhythm. With hands firmly closed, the rider should squeeze evenly with lower legs. The canter is a pace of three beats. The horse creates two separate beats with his four legs and an almost singular beat with his hind legs. The rider should practice sitting in the middle of the saddle and moving with this rocking action. The horse is said to be leading with a certain leg at the canter, according to the foreleg, that is ideally when taking a clockwise round. The off four should be leading. There are two types of canters, true and false. True canter means leading inside foreleg in a riding school. False canter means leading outside foreleg. False canter is also called counter canter. Gallop is a four beat pace with one leg on ground at one time in which a horse runs with full strength and speed and requires more balance and control of the rider. The gallop is the fastest of horses natural gaits. A rider has to move his body forward with the increase of velocity and keep his weight off the horse's back so that the maximum advantage can be taken of the horse's power for speed. The rider's weight is supported and balanced by his thighs, knees and heels and not by his hands or the reins. An even anti-clockwise circular contact with the horse's mouth should be kept at all times. For jumping, the aim of a horse rider has to be with full confidence. Direction plays a very significant role in jumping. The riders go in proper direction and in canter approach the middle of the obstacle. One should enhance legs aid to make the horse jump. It may be in trot or canter depending on the height of the fence. When moving for jump, one has to balance the body and move forward to avoid any jerk from the saddle. The rider should be capable to control the horse after landing from the jump and keep the impulsion for the next fence. The All India Police Equestrian Meet and Mounted Duty Meet is held annually under the aegis of All India Police Sports Control Board. It had commenced and organized by National Police Academy at Mount Abu in the year 1970. Only five teams participated in this first competition. The competition consists of two types of events. The equestrian events and mounted police duty meet involving recognized official sports. Events in national and international meets are dressage, show jumping, eventing, and tent pegging consisting of individual and team events. The dressage has open and novice categories. Show jumping has preliminary, novice, medium and open jumping. Trainees jumping by 